up nerds, I'm Tom, and today I'm going to talk to you all about a game that has nerds in the title. It's funny because I always say nerds all the time, this game has nerds in it, it's like, what? <laughs> Okay, so first things first, I didn't get a lot of good b-roll while playing the game, so I'm probably gonna fill this video up with a lot of filler images. Nerd Word Science is a party-style game where you're trying to guess a term based on clues that were given. Now, there are a few twists with this that are kind of interesting. Uh, the most obvious one is the idea that all of the terms that you're trying to guess are science terms, right? I mean, they are kind of playing it fast and loose with what constitutes a science term. Like, for example, desert is one of the clues, or one of the words that the clue giver is trying to get the guessers to guess. And is desert really a science term? I mean, I guess, you know. And the other twist is actually, let's stick with that example with desert. If I'm trying to get you to guess the word desert, I can only give you clues that begin with a letter that's in the word desert, but it cannot be a D. It cannot be the the letter that the word starts with. So in that example, I, uh, I'm trying to get y'all to guess the word desert, I would put down sand, okay? Because sand is in the word, but it's not the first word, and it does help you guess. Like, I couldn't use the word dune, because that's, well, that's desert begins with D, and D, and so does dune. And if you don't guess that, I could put, like, Egypt, uh, because E is also in there, but I couldn't give another clue that begins with the letter S because there aren't two S's in desert. So as you're guessing these and you're using the clues to figure out what the word is, you're also trying to spell it out. Like you're gaining more letters as the, wor as the word goes on. You say, okay, well, what word would fit these clues, but also has an L, a P, and an X in it? You know what I mean? And more importantly, you're like, well, it has those letters, but it doesn't start with those letters unless you get down to the fourth clue. If you can't guess it by the first three clues, then the fourth clue has to start with the same letter as the word starts with. Now there is a betting aspect to it too. You could possibly bet some extra points depending on how confident you are because you normally get points for getting it right. You actually get more points the earlier you guess it, right? Like if you only need one clue, you get a lot more points than if you need all four clues. Um, but you can always bet more, but of course you're betting on it, right? So if you are wrong, if you say, oh, I really think this is the, the answer and you say, I'm gonna bet an extra three points. If you're right, sure, you'll get an extra three points. But if you're wrong, you'll lose three points. But just the points that you bet, right? You won't lose the points that you would normally have won if you had gotten it right, if that makes sense. The fact that you, the way you write it on the on the board there might confuse people a little bit. And that's mostly it. And overall, I like it. I think it's really clever and interesting. Like it, it's, it's a little twist. I mean, it's something we've seen before trying to guess. It's a guessing game, but the clues, the fact that you have to do a little bit of spelling, you're like, well, what letter, what word, you know, would, would fit this, but also has an L and a D in it, but it doesn't start with either of those, or it definitely has two O's in it based on the fact that you use an O clue twice. You know, it is, you have to think, more like strategically in a way. Um, and the betting is kind of interesting. Um, now the science aspect to it, I'm almost kind of glad that they play it fast and loose with what constitutes science because there's there are some cards that have like a gold uh, rim around them that are like really more advanced science terms. And I'm definitely not a science guy. So uh, some of these terms I either have never heard of before or sure I've heard of that, but I would never guess that in a million years. You know, so that theming aspect of it, I guess, doesn't really work for me. But I mean, you know, enough of these, like I, I, I know science enough to play with the basic card and still get it. But that does bring me to the biggest issue I have with this game is that it's a very nerdy and strategic party game. Like it does say that it goes down to three and two players with like some kind of variant. And no, this is definitely a party game. You, you really want to have the party atmosphere and a lot of people putting their input on the potential clues and stuff. You know, I, I feel like sometimes these games go down to such low player accounts just so that they can put that on the box and think that it'll sell better or whatever. I mean, in theory, you could do that, but should you? I didn't say they couldn't. I said you shouldn't. It's just going to be kind of hard to find an audience for this. Like people who like to play party games and people who like to play strategic games. There's some crossover there, but it, by and large, this is more of a niche audience than it than it isn't. You know, like this is something that, yeah, people who are taking a break from playing big, heavy games would enjoy. But because of the somewhat clunkiness in the rules, uh, the fact that you have to think really strategically and really crunch out and do a lot of spelling while you're trying to guess, and the fact that a lot of the terms are very scientific, this isn't really like the typical party game you'd see people playing at like a dinner party or something, you know?
I do kind of think that this game's biggest strength is also its biggest weakness. Now, if what I was saying in here is interesting to you, then yeah, you'll probably like it. But I just think for the vast majority of people, and I guess I'd also kind of recommend, you know, if you're going to have a party and you want to play this game, this is kind of less accessible for everybody. You know, there's a higher probability that you're going to pull this out and that there's going to be people in your group. If you got a, you know, mix of uh, some people who are gamers, some people who are not, and somebody's flying in from out of town, you know, that kind of thing. You got your family members in there. Um, there's a higher probability that somebody is just not going to really have a good time. So you gotta, you gotta weigh those options there. Overall, I like this game. I had a good time with it. It's fun. Um, I'm not a hundred percent certain I'm going to keep it in my collection. I don't think it has a lot of staying power after playing it a couple of times. I'm kind of over it already. And, and mainly for that reason of it's not necessarily for everybody. Um, it'd be hard pressed for me to keep it in my party game collection. Cause I mean, I only have a couple party games and I'm usually, usually pull those out when, you know, I've got family over and, you know, mixed groups of people and all that kind of stuff, not necessarily with all my real gamery friends, but Hey, if you want to try it out for yourself, I'm going to put a purchase link in the description box down below. Go ahead and get yourself a copy. We also have a link down there for game toppers. So they're sponsored of Neverboard Gaming, but also there's a button that says subscribe. So if you subscribe to our channel, then you'll never be bored.